Because I'm sure you do get that question from time to time. Well, one, we have to uh, define the interpretation of what's radical and what's militant okay. and take it out of its traditional negative sense and put it in a positive sense. Because a lot of times when you have the, that term being projected in society, is being projected by those who are oppressing the masses of our people. And we can see how those who are involved in radical and militant actions are, in a lot of cases, freedom fighters and working to liberate the masses of our people. So if we look at uh, being a radical and a militant in a positive sense in terms of decreasing the oppression on the earth, then we can see how uh, being a radical and being a militant is something positive. And uh, a lot of times I'll be honored to have that term. That title. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's talk about, you say that you try to uh, recruit students into the organization, college yeah. students and all. Can you tell us about your work here in Fort Valley and, and, and in terms of uh, uh, your working with students on the campus and do you have very much student uh, involvement? Yes, yeah, so we've been struggling here at Fort Valley State. I know I have as an individual since 1978 when I came into the party. Um, we have been able to build some work study groups here on the campus. Um, but the job has been hard and we're still struggling to uh, build work study groups on the uh, campus. Uh, one of the things that we have been able to do is to transform the thinking of the students, um, not only on this campus, but other campuses throughout the world, of uh, the identity question. Because I can remember, I could walk up to a student and say, hey, African, how you doing today? <laughs> and they might uh, even get mad. Might I even speak or don't say, don't call me African. Yeah. But today, of the hard struggle of it, we don't have that problem today. Because you can address one now. Hey, how you doing, African? Fine. How you doing, my brother? You understand? Okay. How you doing, my sister? You know, so we will make that transformation. I can remember when we started bringing representatives here from uh, Anzania, some who call South Africa, um, to speak from PAC, the pan African Congress of Tanzania, that our people didn't know nothing about uh, South Africa at the time or what was going on. But now the students on the campus is uh, very intelligent about what's going on in Tanzania. Okay, now you mentioned uh, uh, the work study groups and all. Uh, what do you mean by work study groups? Well, we have uh, a book list, our organization do. We have a political education committee who have a political education guideline that each of us has to follow when we come into a, a work study circus. Uh, with this out of this guideline, we have about 19 books that we have to read. Can you give us some titles? Sure. Um, Malcolm X Speak, Garvey and Garveyism, okay. um, How Europe Undeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney, Capitalism and Slavery. Um, books by Cormier and Krumah. I, um, and so students have to read these books and then uh, there are discussions I uh, assume that follow. Yeah, inside the work study circle. Okay. We all read five pages a day. We come to meet bi-weekly and we discuss these 70 pages because we understand we all read something and get different interpretations. Yes. So here we must come to discuss these different interpretations so when we leave the room we don't uh, come out with uh, the best analyzation that we could to present the truth to the masses of our people because that's what we're looking for, truth. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Jamar, what happens once those 19 works have been read? What happens then? Do um, those who are members of your organization continue to educate themselves or read or, or do they go out and perhaps become leaders or mentors for others who are coming into your organization? Well, after you, after you read the first book list, then we have more advanced book lists in terms of after you've been, been in the party for three years, you will be termed a pre-cadre. And the cadre inside our party is someone who has been in the organization four or five years. And it's at that point when you are an official member inside the All African People's Revolutionary Party. So a after a person finish those two years, actually you just start getting your feet wet in terms of moving to advanced work in regards to the act okay, so the that, movement. So that calls for some dedication. Lifelong. It does, doesn't it? 
Okay. Now, I understand that uh, we want to get back and talk a bit uh, more about uh, the African Liberation Day that's coming up. You have some activities slated um, in terms of fundraising for this area. Can you um, tell us about that? Yes. We're planning to have a talent show on April the 30th um, in Finals Hall Auditorium here at Fort Valley State College. Um, we are giving away $300, want to take all. For those who want to come to participate, um, we're going to have an auditions on the 23rd of April at 1 p.m. in Finals Hall Auditorium. So if you want to come get in on this, trying to win this $300 and help support the masses of our people in celebrating the 36th annual anniversary of Africa Liberation Day, so come on, sign up, and if uh, we will have a number at the end of the show, Okay, let's just the call. give them that number now. We'll um, run that on the screen. Area code 912-825-4063. Okay. okay, and I'm sure our viewers will see this. Now, are there any uh, restrictions in terms of the kind of talent that you can uh, showcase for this uh, talent show? No, we haven't, but um, it must be moral. Okay. Because it's a family event that we're right. trying to do. And uh, we want everybody to be okay, any pleased. age limit or restriction? any age limit, no restriction here. Okay, all right. Now, uh, will there be uh, an admission fee for yes, the talent the admission show? for the fa for the uh, talent show will be three dollars. Okay, and those and that date again, so we'll make sure that the audition is April the twenty third at okay. one p.m. in Finals Hall. The event itself is April the thirtieth at seven p.m. in Finals Hall. Okay. Now, what are some of the other activities aside from having um, uh, seminars and so forth uh, coming up on the 27th and 28th at Tougaloo College in Mississippi? What other kinds of activities will be uh, featured at this uh, celebration, this anniversary celebration? Uh, we will have a, a rally um, at Mega Level Community Park in Jackson, Mississippi, where it'll be an Ado event, where we will have different speakers from organizations to come to make presentations. Uh, we will have also uh, cultural uh, performance groups uh, to come to perform at African Liberation Day. So it'll be a whole day of fun activities. We have our youth uh, to come to participate uh, at African Liberation Day also. So it'll be a whole fun event. You know, it's a family event. It's an educational, political event for our African masses. Now, Mr. Jamar, what if someone is interested in, in um, going along on this trip? Uh, what kind of transportation have you planned, and uh, with whom should the person, uh, whom should the person contact if uh, he or she is interested in attending? Well, they can contact the same number they would for the uh, fashion show. And what we are in the process of doing is we are organizing transportation now. And uh, more than likely, we will we will take a bus down the African Liberation Day. Now, do you have to be a member of the organization in order to go? No. Oh, you don't. No. Okay. All right. So people can call you and and get details on I guess um, if there's a charge or cost involved in the transportation and the like. That's right. Okay. All right. I see it's time for us to take a break at this point. We'll ask our viewers to. Stay with us. We will return shortly and talk more about uh, the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Stay with us. Welcome back to In the Know. We're talking today with Mr. Yambu and Mr. Jamar, and they're representing the All African People's Revolutionary Party. And gentlemen, I don't think I've had a chance to establish uh, your specific roles with the party, so can you tell us exactly what are your roles or your offices with this organization? Well, I'm on the program committee of the All African People's Revolutionary Party in the Georgia chapter. I also serve on the chapter coordinating committee of that um, of the program committee. Um, brother, me, me and brother Wasanu both share this position as our co-coordinators, and we sit on the 
Hobbs body in the Georgia chapter, which is the Georgia court, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> which is the uh, uh, chapter coordinating committee. Okay. Now, how many chapters do you have in Georgia? We only have one chapter just in Georgia. Just one chapter in, in Georgia, okay, just Georgia right. but you have um, units. Chapters in other um, states. States as well. And right. speaking of that, uh, we want, I guess, our viewers to know that uh, this celebration will not just be taking place in Tugu, at Tugu College in Jackson, but in other sites as well. Can you tell us about some of the other sites where uh, there will be celebrations going on? Yes. Um, also, I'd like to say that we all we always celebrated African Liberation Day in Washington D.C. up to 1983. It was 83 mm -hmm. that we uh, centralized African Liberation Day and spread it uh, in other states inside the U.S. Okay, so you uh, centralized it, you spread it out throughout the right, country. Right, we regionalized it, and okay. we have African Liberation Days in Texas, Dallas, Texas, um, Los Angeles, California. Um, New York, uh, Paris, France, Bonn, Germany, uh, St. Thomas, Virgin Island, uh, and Zambia, which most people call South Africa. Yes. Um, we have African Liberation Days in Ohio. We have them in several states inside the United States. So people might hear of African Liberation Day being held in other places. So, you know, we encourage them to go and attend the one that they can attend. But close. Yes. Too. Now, and also, um, we will be putting out some literature on African Liberation okay. Day, telling them more about other places and contact numbers right. in these other areas. Okay. In case we have some viewers who are just joining us, we want to um, reiterate the, the dates on African Liberation Day and also give that phone number again. Can you do that for us, Mr. Jamal? Yes, uh, the dates is May 27th and 28th in Jackson, Mississippi. The phone numbers is for the Atlanta area, it'll be area code 404-808-0352. For the Fort Valley area, we have two numbers. One will be area code 912-825-9260. Okay. And the other one is 825-4063. Alright, and we hope our viewers will note those numbers. now. Uh, I understand that your dress will be somewhat special on that day, and, and can you tell us uh, uh, what people will be wearing and why that particular dress? Yeah, we uh, actually we want to wear white uh, to show uh, purpose of unity among us as a people on that particular day, these two days event. Uh, we ask them to wear white for both days um, okay. for unity. All right. Now, just what? Uh, do you see as being the significance of the benefits uh, of your organization to um, the community at large? How do you answer that question? Well, one thing that you find that our people at large have, have a need for us to work together on a worldwide basis as one people. And there is a need for us to Define those concepts, those the, those theories, just going to help advance the masses of our people, and we find that our our role in terms of the work we do help to facilitate us having the progressive type of information, the progressive type of analysis that's going to help us make those decisions, just going to move us towards being a strong, powerful, and respected people like other people with power. Okay, now you're saying one of the uh, unique things, at least during the break, things about your organization is that it is an inclusive organization. It's uh, unlike maybe some other organizations. Um, can you uh, elaborate a bit further? Yes, well, you see, because of the political line, meaning the directions, the direction that our organization is going in, it created the conditions where brothers and sisters all over the planet can join our organization. Because one, we're saying we're one people with uh, one goal and one objective. That's what we need in order for us to move in unison. And we are seeing that the significance of uh, what we're doing is uh, helping our people to move in that direction. Okay. Um, 
few moments ago, uh, Mr. Yambu, we spoke about uh, South Africa, and would you kindly give the name, <laughs> well, um, the African name? The yeah, Anzania, it means home of the black man and woman. Okay. And once we're uh, liberated, that would be known as. <laughs> okay. I'm sure well, both of you are very much aware of what's happening there with um, um, the, the vote uh, about to be uh, given to all of um, the citizens of South Africa and that pretty soon they'll be having this election where all will participate. Um, what um, is your stance in terms of what's happening in South Africa? Because we even know that uh, within the various communities there are factions and so forth. So uh, where do you stand in terms of um, uh, your support, um, uh, the ANC or some other group? Can you speak to that question? Yes, our political position is that we support the national liberation of Anzania by the freedom fighters in Anzania. Um, we have been working with ANC and PAC, uh, African National Congress and the Pan-Africanist uh, Congress. And we have also done work with the Black Countries Movement and the Southwest African Student Organization. We know that as many organizations exist inside of Anzania. We have to look at the different uh, organizations and their political position inside of uh, Anzania and see who had the most correct line uh, at the time. But we give uh, democratic support to all the freedom fighters there. Um, I imagine our organization have did more work in line with the Pan-Africanist Congress of Anzania simply because they are Pan-Africanists. And we look at the uh, confusion going on among us in Anzania at the time that... Such as uh, the war and factions and the killing... Right, the well... We can see that the Encarta is not in line with the Pan-Africanist movement because no Pan-Africans want to do anything to kill or eliminate their brothers and sisters in warfare um, for colonialism. Um, so we know that they are in line. We can see it, it's clear that they are in line with the apartheid regime. Uh, we can understand that the apartheid regime get them weapons to fight against us because no other organization in Tanzania have the right to be armed against other people. And we have to ask ourselves, where did the Encarta get their arms from? And why is the military of the apartheid regime uh, protecting them? If PAC had guns in the street shooting at Europeans, we could see how quickly that the military of uh, the apartheid regime will move forward. Um, we're seeing that the Encartas is uh, attacking ANC and trying to interrupt the elections. They're even saying that they want their own state, which we know is absurd. Okay. Can you, for those of us perhaps who do not know what the Encarta uh, means or refers to, can you tell us? Well, it's, it's, it's um, Buzalewa, who is the chief of the Zulu, yes. um, heads this organization. Okay. Um, and Will there be any representatives from oh, we will also. at the, um, let's say, um, the meeting or your gathering uh, in, at Tugalu and other places? Sure, from Anzani, South yes. Africa? Yes, we, we will. Um, and also, we, will, we would like to say that we will be hosting, holding the African Liberation Day also in Anzani. Oh. And last year, we uh, did African Liberation Day in Anzani. As well. As well. And uh, we did it in several um, timeships in Anzani. And we will also be hosting it there this year. So, um, African Liberation Day is also being held on other parts of the uh, continent of Africa. So, it's nothing just being held outside of Africa and not in Africa. It's a worldwide struggle of African people uh, to come together to unite. Because in 1958, Kwame Nkrumah and the eight independent African states uh, had their first. Um, federal um, convention in Ghana and called for African Freedom Day, which would have been held on April 15th every year up to 1963. And in 1963, 31 heads of state called for the organization of African unity and changed the event from African Freedom Day to African Liberation Day and changed the date from April 15th to May 25th and Africans throughout the world been holding African Liberation Day ever since. All right. Okay, so. on that note, I think we're almost out of time. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jamar, any parting words from you for our audience before we leave today? No, I just hope that everyone can attend African Liberation Day. 
Okay. And if we got one more second, we we'll also like to say if students can organize transportation to Jackson, Mississippi from the capitals and getting their buses and their vans to come to Jackson to help celebrate African Liberation Day, it will be most important because a lot of students do with SGA and other uh, organizations on the campus organize their own transportation to come to Africa Liberation Day. All right, I see we're about out of time. Gentlemen, again, thank you for coming and sharing with us about your organization, about your upcoming uh, celebration. And we thank our viewers for being with us today. I'm Joyce Jenkins. Please join us for future shows on In the Know.